Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, we're going to take a look at how our IGP metrics work in the lab. I've got the same usual setup for this section with my five routers, R1 to R5, and the IP addresses are already configured. I've got no routing protocols and no static routes configured yet. Let's just verify that. So at the command line, you can see I've done a show IP interface brief and there's the IP addresses and from a show IP route I can see it's just connected routes there so there's no routing configured. First up let's see what happens with RIP. So I've got the config ready to go here so let's just copy this basic RIP configuration and I'll paste that in on every router. So we've got it there on R1, on R2, R3, R4, and R5. And if I look back at the topology again, what we're going to check for is on R1, it's route to 10.1.2.0 slash 24. So when we're using RIP, you know this already, the path that it's going to take, it's going to go along the bottom path. The reason is that RIP uses hop count as its metric, and it's only two hops to the 10.1.2 network over the path through R5, it would be three hops over the top path. So RIP doesn't care that the top path has actually got higher bandwidth. Let's verify that at the command line. So I'll go to R1 and do a show IP route. We should see our RIP routes in the routing table now, and we're looking for the path to the 10.1.2 network. I can see it was learned by RIP, and the next hop is 10.0.3.2, which is the bottom path on R5. And it's going out fast Ethernet 3 slash 0, on R1. Okay, let's see what happens if we shut down that interface. So I'll go config T and go to interface fast 3 slash 0 and do a shutdown. Now, when I do this, what's going to happen is the routing protocol is going to reconverge, meaning it's going to see that the path has gone down and recalculate the next best path. But this is going to take a little bit of time. So I've just shut down the interface. And if I do a show IP route again, you'll see, actually that was really quick. We were just unlucky there. It can often take a bit longer than that. So it has recalculated the path for 10.1.2.0 slash 24, and it's now going to 10.0.0.2, which is on the top path to R2, out interface fast ethernet zero slash zero. To show you the effect of convergence, actually, if I just do a config T and interface fast, it was three slash zero, and do a no shutdown on here and end. And if I do a show IP route again, you'll see traffic is still going out the 10.0.0.2 um, interface to R2. It will take a little bit of time before RIP sees that the better path is back up again, and then it will move back over to going through R5. Okay, so that was our RIP hop count in action. Next up, let's have a look at what happens with ISIS. So I'll copy a basic ISIS config in here. Now with the CCNA exam, ISIS is not really tested much on there because like I said before, it's not really used in enterprise environments unless they're very large and they've got their own MPLS network. It's more commonly used in service provider networks. So if you do study for a service provider track later, you will get tested a lot more heavily in ISIS. Anyway, let's 
put that config in, in fact, to save a bit of time, I'll put a config T in here at the top to save me typing that every time. And I'm gonna to need to change the net address every time as well. So hopefully I'll remember to do that. It's fine for R1, so there's my ISIS config. Then I need to go back to the text file and just edit this because every router needs to have a unique net address. So I'll make R2 number two, R3 will be number three and so on. So I'll paste this one into R2, go back and edit the text file for R3 and copy that, paste that one into R3 back to the text file again and we need to do r4 copy this and paste that into r4 and then just one more to do which is going to be our r5 router and that's going to be number five okay so i'm pasting in an isis config in here and what's going to happen is ISIS routes are going to replace our RIP routes in the routing table. The reason for that is administrative distance, which is going to be covered in another lecture coming up really soon in this section. So I'll do a show IP route on R1, and you can see now that my RIP routes have been removed. They've been replaced with ISIS routes. Again, we're looking for the route to the 10.1.2 network, which is behind R4. And right now, this is going via 10.0.0.2, which if we have a look at the topology table, is going along the top path. Okay, so that's not what we were expecting, right? Because I didn't configure any costs on my links. When you don't manually set costs in your links in ISIS, it's going to act just like RIP because all links have got the same cost by default. So basically it acts using hop count. But if we're using hop count, we'd expect the route to go via R5, right? Well, what's probably happening here is just convergence again, where the R1 router will have formed an adjacency with R2 and learned the route via R2. It hasn't learned the route via R5 yet. But when it does learn that route from R5, it will see that it's a better cost and it's gonna go out the fast three slash zero interface instead. So let's just see if that's happened yet. So again, you can see before it's going out fast 0, 0 with a next hop of 10.0.0.2. Let's try this command again. And there we go, 10.1.2.0 is now going out fast 3 slash 0, which is what we expect. So that's a good lesson actually that just after you've configured a routing protocol, if you have a look at the routing table and you're not seeing what you were expecting, just give it another minute or so and you'll see it'll probably reconverge and then you'll get what you are expecting then. Okay, so that was the metric with ISIS. Actually, let's just check it failing over with uh, this routing protocol as well. So I'll go config T, I'll go to interface fast three slash zero and I will shut that down and then do a show IP route. And for 10.1.2.0, you can see it's still going via 10.0.3.2. So it, it has not reconverged yet. Again, we need to give it a little bit of time for the routing protocol to detect that the path has gone down and then recalculate the next best path. So I put the command in again, you can see it is now reconverged and now for 10.1.2.0, it is going via R2 at 10.0.0.2, the next best path. Okay, let's remember to bring that interface back up again. So I'll go config T, 
interface fast free slash zero and do a no shut. Okay, so we've had a look at RIP and ISIS, which are going to take the really the lowest hop count for both unless you manually set a cost on your links in ISIS. So RIP uses hop count as its metric, ISIS uses cost, but all links default to the same cost. So next up, we'll have a look at another routing protocol. We'll have a look at OSPF next. So this one, I can just copy and paste the same config in on every router. So let's do that on R1 and R2, R3, R4 and R5. And again, because of the administrative distance, which again, we're going to cover later, the OSPF routes are going to replace the ISIS routes. So let's do a show IP route. And I can see that OSPF has not converged yet. So let's just try this command again. Might have to wait a second for this. Okay, and there I got the message in the log that the OSPF adjacency has just come up now. So I hit the up arrow again. And okay, that's just to one of my routers. So I can see I've got an OSPF route in the routing table going out interface fast zero slash zero, which is going to R2. So that adjacency has come up but the adjacency to R5 has not come up yet. I can see that because I don't have any OSPF routes going to three slash zero yet. And if I hit the up arrow, I think I still won't see it because I didn't see the adjacency coming up yet. Oh, there it is. Okay, I see what the problem is. Actually, that last route, that last ISIS route is for our internet interface, which I did not include in OSPF, but I did include it in ISIS, so that's why it's showing up there. So don't worry about that bottom route. Okay, so OSPF uses cost as its metric, and that does take bandwidth into account by default. If we have a quick look on R5, and I do show IP interface brief, just to check the interfaces I'm using. Okay, fast two slash zero and three slash zero. If I do a show run fast two slash zero, uh, I missed out the interfaces. Show run interface fast, two slash zero, I can see there I've set the bandwidth to 10 megabits per second. The default bandwidth on fast ethernet is of course 100 megabits per second. So I've set my interfaces on R5 to be lower bandwidth links. And that's why OSPF is preferring to go along the top path rather than going through R5. So let's just verify that. And from the show IP route on R1, I can see the route for 10.1.2.0 is going through the top path 10.0.0.2. So that's different than what we got with RIP and ISIS. And the reason is that OSPF does take bandwidth into account by default. If I shut the interface fast zero slash zero down, which is when it's currently being used, then we will see it will fail over to going through R5. So I saw that my adjacency with the R2 router went down. If I now do a show IP route and check the traffic for 10.1.2 network, I can see that it has failed over to go via R5 at 10.0.3.2. Okay, let's bring the interface back up again, which was fast zero slash zero this time. I'll do a no shut. And the last routing protocol to look at is EIGRP. So let's bring our text file back up again. I will copy our basic EIGRP configuration and paste that in on every router. Again, EIGRP is going to be preferred to OSPF because it's got a better administrative distance. So it is going to replace those OSPF routes in the routing table. And I just need to do a config T on R5 and paste it in. Okay, and that should be EIGRP running. Might just take a minute to converge. I can see my adjacencies coming up at the command line here. So if I do a show IP route on R1, 
and EIGRP, like OSPF, does take bandwidth into account by default. So I expect my EIGRP route to go via R2. If we have a look for 10.1.2.0, it is going via R2 at 10.0.0.2. And again, we can watch EIGRP fail over as well. If I shut down that fast 0 slash 0 interface, and then just give it a second to converge so I can see that the EIGRP adjacency was updated. EIGRP does converge very quickly, but I now do a show IP route for 10.1.2.0, I can see that it has failed over to 10.0.3.2. Okay, so that was a look at our routing protocol metrics. See you in the next lecture. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.